right knee arthroscopy. The third year resident is driving the scope. So you can see his left hand has the scope and he is probing the intraarticular structures. And I'm explaining what to do. This is an individual that had an osteochondral fracture with a loose body that came off his lateral femoral condyle. So now we found that loose body in the medial gutter. Uh, so we have the scope lateral and we're going to get the loose body out um, by grasping it. You can see the Schlesinger grasper is in that medial portal of this right knee. And we want to make sure we have a really good bite. There are no uh, ratchets on this grasper, so he's holding the grasper very taut. And if we want to make sure we don't lose it, we can put it in the notch, and that's a good backboard so you don't end up losing it in the super patellar pouch. And the other trick is to use your knife to make a little bigger medial portal so you can get this out without losing it in the soft tissues. If you lose it in the tough, soft tissues, it's not a big deal, but you do have to then maybe put your scope medially and find that loose body. This is a pretty big loose body, measured like two by one centimeters. Uh, and you can see there's no bone on that loose body, so it's ar all articular cartilage. So he's got the scope lateral. He's got a pretty good bite of it, but we can maybe get a little better bite. And I have the scope now, so sometimes you use this um, uh, as a dual effort, so to speak. So he's got the Schlesinger, and we're going to be pulling on the loose body, tortoise. And then as we pull, we'll do an increase in the arthrotomy so that we can get that out without losing it. If you end up having a large loose body like this one and you lose fluid through that medial portal, you can always put a suture in and then proceed with the remainder of your arthroscopy. So he's uh, looking down at the portal, looking up at the screen, and it is important to have the screen directly in the middle of the patient or in a position that is um, easy for you to manipulate your eyes and your neck. So he has now removed the loose body part of it. There's still part of it that's in there, so we have to keep our eye on that loose body and not lose what is remaining. So we got about half of it out and then open the jaws big and wide. The person driving the scope needs to keep the eye on the ball, so to speak, so you can see it. And then we'll get more of this loose body out. And you can see how he's rotating it and now he got the rest of the loose body out. So took it out in two pieces. Um, and the key there is to make sure you have a good grasp and make a big enough um, incision in the portal so that you can get it out. So now we have the scope and we're looking for what the lesion is. And you can see the resident has the arthroscope and we're leaning into a varus position to be able to get into the lateral portal. The scope is lateral in this right knee looking at the lateral meniscus. Lateral meniscus has a little fraying, but the main problem here is his osteochondral fracture of his lateral femoral condyle. So you can see where the light source is looking upward. Uh, and you do need to hold the scope down past the camera so you can use your fingers on that same hand to manipulate the scope. So you can use your other hand, your right hand, for probing and measuring. Uh, and we're now measuring what the size of that defect is. You can see it's down to subchondral bone. Uh, and we're looking at the size of the defect. The size of the defect will dictate whether we do a microfracture or do we stage him for some other articular cartilage procedure. So you can see the patient's leg is in varus. The resident is leaning into him. Uh, and then this is this very large defect in the lateral femoral condyle, measuring two by one centimeters. Meniscus looks OK. So now I'll take uh, the scope. I'm holding the scope with my left hand. That's the anterior cruciate ligament. And so now we'll do a, a quick diagnostic scope. This is the patella up on the top. So with this, you keep the uh, leg in neutral. Uh, go into the medial lateral uh, compartment. That's the medial compartment lateral gutter. Look for any further loose bodies in the lateral gutter. 
and then you can come, come down into the popliteus tendon area where if there's some small loose bodies they may lie there uh, so I'm looking for loose bodies. The popliteus tendon is up at the 1 o'clock position. You can see where the light source, there's a little V there where it's looking that direction. So I'm looking to the right now at a 90 degree angle at 3 o'clock. And then you can also look down uh, to see if there are any loose bodies, which there are no further loose bodies. And now I've got the knee going into a varus position. Sometimes I'll put a little step up um, under my foot so I can easily control the leg on my upper leg and put the um, probe in the medial compartment or the medial portal uh, and now we're measuring again how big that defect is so it's a 20 by 10 uh, millimeter defect the meniscus looks okay and it's important to measure this so we can again uh, figure out what we're going to do with a microfracture or other articular cartilage procedures such as a, a macy uh, an oats uh, allograft, autograft. There's the anterior cruciate ligament, trochlear groove. You can see where the position of our mayo is, so we can grab that shaver if we need it. We need to be able to efficiently do arthroscopic surgery. The setup is a key, and you can see the circulator over there has everything that we need. Not too much, but just enough so we can get at it. So you can get rid of this part, get rid of this part, get rid of this part, get rid of that part. Putting the, the curved shaver is being used to just to breed that frayed edge of the lateral meniscus, but this really isn't the problem. The meniscus is fine to probing. You can see I just took a picture. Uh, we take a picture on the camera head. We can record, take a picture. You can see the water there on the right. Sometimes the bags have to be up higher to develop more of a pressure head because we're using gravity for pressure. I don't use um, uh, any um, pressure pumps in the knee, so this is gravity pressure. And we're using oscillate just to shave that meniscus. So now we are putting the scope medial because we're doing the work in the lateral compartment, so we have switched our scope to the original working portal put it with a cannula and then put the scope uh, in and now through that lateral portal we can do our work. However, we're going to do a microfracture so we will triangulate to see how we're going to get our drill. You can see I've got the knee in about 90 degrees of flexion putting a spinal needle in to triangulate this. I usually hold the spinal needle more toward the back of the needle and you can see where we're a little flat there, so we're going to come a little bit further down, measuring the size again of this defect when we've got the scope medial, working portal lateral. Pretty big defect. You can see we've debrided this. You can use a curette or your curveful radius resector to get good edges, uh, walls around the defect. And now you can see uh, on that all inside on the left the size of the defect. And you see it almost looks like it's down to bleeding bone. This patient's injury was about two months prior to this arthroscopy. The circulating nurse has gotten the uh, water down low, the normal saline down low, so sometimes you might lose your distension in the joint. So if you do that and you have a red out, you got to think you're out of water or there isn't enough pressure or the water is off for some reason. Again, getting that uh, wall to be a good edge, you can do that with a duckbill, which I'm doing now, or you can use a curette, an open curette or a closed curette, and you want that to be the structure around the defect before you're doing your microfracture. So this size of this defect and the acuteness of the defect was adequate 
and, ex and we did a microfracture in this case. You can do a microfracture with awls. Uh, probably a better way to do it is this is a 0.45 smooth K wire that we're going to be putting in. So I'm just getting those walls to be as abrupt um, or saucerizing it so we don't have any loose fragments. And now you can see where the uh, we've got a drill with a smooth K wire there. Four or five, and we'll triangulate to make sure we can get perpendicular to that defect. Again, there's a big enough portal there where now I can bring in my curved shaver and finish the debridement of the defect, preparing it for the microfracture. And you can see the nice bleeding that's there. Sometimes you need to turn your water off and see how much bleeding there is. I typically do that after we get through with the microfracture. The knee is in 90 degrees of flexion. You see me taking a picture there with the uh, uh, picture popping up there on the left. Now you can see the defect that we have totally prepared. Put the scope back in the medial portal with the cannula and the obturator to avoid any damage to the tip of the arthroscope. Put it in. Lock it looking in that lateral compartment. So to get in the lateral compartment to do the work, we're going to have the leg go into varus. We'll put our thigh on the foot to go into more varus. So now I've got the cannula with the blunt obturator in the lateral portal. And we have to be perpendicular to be able to do the drilling. So if you see, the uh, we're very parallel there. So that does not allow us access to do the microfracture. Localizing this with a spinal needle with the knee inflection is then done so that we can get perpendicular. I like to hold the needle back at the back of the, away from the tip of the needle. And we'll up the table. Got to make sure your mayo's out of the way. And so now when I'm looking at this, I want to be as perpendicular as possible. So we might have to flex the knee a little bit more. It is good to make a little bit of a skin stab incision because you don't want the stainless steel to make a tattoo on the skin. So you can see here where I'm triangulating. I'm keeping my scope still on that lesion. And see how I've come down a little bit. We can still clear the tibia and get a perpendicular um, approach to be able to do the microfracture with 0.04. Uh, 5k wires. So we'll get our drill here. So he's just going through the skin with that. And we can use a, a cannula like that. Um, we don't really need to use it. We're just using the blunt so we can get the soft tissues dilated enough to make it easy to get the uh, drill in there. You can use a uh, cannula if you want to, but usually you can just freehand this and drill it in that way. A little easier to change the angle of your drill and pin. Sometimes you have to come in to breed the um, fat from around there. So in this situation I left the cannula in place because the fat pad was jumping on the um, uh, needle and we need to be able to see and you can take your curved shaver and get rid of some of the fat pad. It seems like the fat pad does attack. And then I'm just breeding the fat pad around the cannula so we can get a better view and be able to see. So this pen doesn't really have a marker on it or a um, line, laser line, so we can see how deep to go. So we're looking down at the uh, drill itself and we go in about 30, 40 millimeters in depth. And what we're looking for is uh, bleeding um, and uh, fat to come out of these drill holes. And you can see I'm moving around the metal cannula so we can get it a different place, making it a honeycomb type uh, approach to the um, defect. And so microfracturing that, um, that area. Again, another microfracture poke hole made. And you can see where we're controlling the drill, looking down at how the depth is. And you can do this freehand, but you've got a pretty small drill bit, so you don't want to bend the drill bit. So it's a little safer to have some type of a cannula. It can be a plastic disposable cannula, 
or this cannula was working well. And again, I'm keeping my eye on the defects so we can keep track of the number of microfracture um, uh, passes that we've made. And you can see where there's good bleeding um, from this um, from this uh, four or five drill holes that we've made. I haven't turned the water off at this point. And you can see on the all inside how good the bleeding is with these good humors of bone marrow and blood coming out of the uh, uh, microfracture holes. So we're happy with that, and you can see how much bleeding there is there. So in this defect that's two by one centimeter, we're hopeful that uh, with the microfracture technique, he will fill in with a not a normal surface of articular cartilage collagen, but a better surface than the um, defect of the uh, pothole, so to speak. So looking at different curettes that we can use, you can use an open curette, you can use a closed curette. 